late 1960s America saw the emergence of underground comics, a new wave of humorous, politically charged comic books which were as radical as artistically innovative. Started as a reaction against the 1954 Comic Code Authority, which stipulated no sex, no violence, no drugs, and no social relevance in comic books, the underground comics pushed the boundaries of each of these categories through its art and content. As follows, this title appealed to an adult audience and included issues such as the Vietnam War, the civil rights struggle, anarchism, socialism, gay, and women's liberation. As we might expect, cartooning was not an obvious career choice for a woman, but the 1960s time of openness, change, and artistic experimentation paved the way for several female artists to finally step forward and take some space in comic book making and publishing. In this video essay, we will analyze the comics of one of them, Aline kominsky Drum, from a post-feminist point of view. While her husband, Robert Crumb, may have received recognition beyond the underground community, men were not the only pioneers in the movement. Aline's role was quite crucial, and with her crude drawing style and the themes she dealt with, she changed forever the game for women's comics. Kominsky Crumb was indeed the first female artist to produce an autobiographical comic, published in the first issue of the all-female anthology, Women's Comics, in 1972. In Goldie, a neurotic woman, the artist exposes issues of beauty standards and body image that very much affected her while growing up. Her expressionistic style serves a narrative of chronic insecurity and self-awareness caused by her physical appearance in her teens. The comic artist distorts her face, legs and hips, drawing the attention of the viewer towards those body parts she felt most insecure about. Comics critics Duncan and Smith claim that expressionism is used for presenting a character's subjective point of view or an inner emotional reality. Surprisingly, Kaminsky Crumb claims that she was not really aware she was molding a completely new art form. She has admitted she did what came naturally, writing and drawing what she knew deeply from her personal experience. I think I was the first autobiographical women cartoonist. And so I started something that then really developed into a, a huge art form. Also, her representation of the female body is neither in line with the beauty standards proposed by other media, such as magazines, nor with the idealized characters presented in mainstream comics. Let's take the case of the Archie comics. The depiction of gender in this teenage drama series was hardly out of step with much of popular culture and the comic book industry of the 1960s. In the series, Rivaldeer high schooler Archie Andrews was involved in a love triangle which saw two young girls, Betty and Veronica, battling for Archie's attention and carrying out the stereotypical narrative of boy craziness and cattiness against each other. All the teenage girls in Archie are drawn in an identical fashion and all share the same precise body type, long legs, thin waist and large breasts. The female body in Archie comics is constantly on display for the pleasure of the clearly heterosexual male reader. Instead, through her often ugly, crass and explicit comics, Kominsky Crumb overturns the spectacularization of the female body and places herself in a position of control. She is no more the object, but the subject of them, dictating the narrative on her body and sexuality. The way this artist explores the complexity of sexuality and female subjectivity is oftentimes outside the dichotomies of sex as either painful or enjoyable and woman as either object or subject. This idea resonates well with McCrubby's argument in Feminism, Postmodernism and the Real Me, in which she acknowledges the new possibilities of positioning the self outside dual black and white outlooks such as gender. Her comics are challenging, not only because they can easily be labeled as pornographic, but also because the images are ambivalent. They offer a more nuanced of what a correct feminist sexual politics should look like. Aline kominsky Crump sees sexuality as something that, even when disruptive, does not have to be turned over to the gaze of the other. With their use of bodies that are too much on the page, 
the comic artist manages to disrupt a masculinist economy of knowledge production, in which naked female bodies and sexual encounters are not necessarily arousing and appealing to the viewer. For example, in the Dirty Laundry comics, Kaminsky Crump openly represents their sexual fantasies and encounters on the page for the readers to see. If one would normally think that this sort of representations are denigratory for the character of Aline, this is actually not the case. What we see represented in the Dirty Laundry comics is indeed a perverse, yet consensual, marital relationship that Aline and Robert share, as we can notice from the dialogues they exchange and the fact that both of them are represented as the dominant partner. Aline's naked body dominates the page and easily places itself as the object of the reader's attention. However, she is an active subject of the scene rather than a passive object intended for audience pleasure. Kaminsky Crumb fully acknowledges the complexity of sexuality not only by representing it as a pleasurable everyday act, but also something you can be shamed for. However, many slut-shaming episodes won't stop Aline from exploring her sexuality in the way she considers most appropriate for her. Other underground comic artists such as Lee Mars and Roberta Gregory focused on feminist issues such as representation of bodies and sexuality as well. Comic scholar Hilary Shute points out that it is the very representation of the body on the page that constructs how we look at the page itself. Specifically in Mart's Pudge, we get instances of how the varieties of bodies and femininities interact with each other. In the scene that depicts the protagonist's interaction with the other member of the self-help group, different panels portraying different women overlap, and it is not always possible to understand what the individual character is saying. However, the reader perceives a sense of wholeness resulting from the inclusion of women of different ethnicities and sexualities in the panel. Kaminsky's work stands out from this example of underground feminist comics. By rejecting togetherness and visual harmony, the artist presents an unfixed, always shifting female self who finds stability in her fluctuant body image and idea of sexuality. Indeed, characteristic of her work are varying degrees of artistic line works, clothes that suddenly change, and bodies that swell or shrink. Differently from other artists involved in women's comics, Kaminsky Crump has a fierce commitment to freedom of expression that allow her not only to be a creative and experimental artist, but also to celebrate the ordinariness of their bodies, physical imperfection and sexuality of women, which very often are neglected in mainstream comics narratives. Lost in